Hi guys, my name is Eliza and this is Eliza's Bookshelf. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. Today I'm doing one of the most difficult videos for me. It is my May wrap up and I hate doing these wrap ups because I read a ton of books and I don't remember anything and so when I do these wrap ups I'm like what can I even tell you guys about it but I'll try. I definitely set out all of my books on the floor here based on my most favorite and my least favorite and it looks like it was not a good romance month for May. All of the books on the lower end right here are romance books and all the books that I enjoyed more are fantasy books and one like literary fiction book but uh, so sad. Let's go over my least favorite all the way to my most favorite. So my least favorite bum 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 Christina Lauren's One True Love. Yeah oh sorry the the True Love Experiment. See, I don't even know what the book is called. <laughs> One True Loves? Did I read something else called One True Loves recently? No, it was just this. It was The True Love Experiment. Oh, I'm so embarrassed already. So this book is kind of like a spinoff to their other book called... Oh my gosh. Um, What was it called? The Soulmate Equation. Oh my gosh, I am terrible. So One True... Oh god. Oh, okay, okay. One True Loves was a book from Taylor Jenkins Reid. Okay, that's why I'm getting it so mixed up. Anyways, The True Love Experiment is kind of like a spin-off of their other book, The Soulmate Equations. So you definitely get the first couple in that book in this one a lot, and I like that. I enjoyed seeing that couple in this book and revisiting their story, but this is about Fizzy Chen, who is the friend of the first couple. She's like friends with both of them. I think she was initially friends with the male main character but you know eventually became friends with both of them. No, no, scratch that. I think she was friends with both of them. Anyways, so Felicity Chen is the friend of the couple from the beginning and she is a romance author I believe, a romance novelist and she's kind of like stuck in a rut and she's like I'm not really following my advice that I give to my readers. I'm going to change that and she gets this chance to be like a star of a romance show that is run by this guy named Connor Prince. He's the producer of the show and he doesn't really want to do this romance, you know, reality dating show, but he has to to get funding for his, you know, production company to, in order to do his own videos of like, I think he does documentaries of uh, oceanic creatures. I think he, I think he does, I think he does documentaries in San Diego of like oceanic creatures. I don't know, but yeah, so he's stuck in this project and he ropes in Felicity Chen to be his you know, star of the show. And the premise of the dating show was actually really good. I would like to see this in TV. Honestly, um, yeah, if uh, Nick Lachey and Vanessa can get on that, that would be great. Thank you. But anyway, so the dating show is pretty cool because it brings in the, um, the whole dating app thing of the soulmate equation. Basically, it has to do with your genomic sequence and everyone, you know, inputs their data in the dating app and they match you with the perfect person. Um, and there's like gold matches, platinum matches, like, you know, crazier and crazier matches. But anyway, so he uses this dating show with Felicity Chen and matches her with a bunch of people on this app and, and there's like the most platinum match on there, but the the viewers will be the ones to vote on who they think is the most she's the most compatible with. So they compare each other's results with the audience and the actual app. So that was cool. I thought that was great. The problem is with this book, I didn't really care for the relationship between Connor and Felicity Chen themselves because she kept going back on this, you know, dating and stuff. There's like a bunch of guys that she's dating on the show and three main ones particularly that sticks out so the whole time I'm reading about her dating other people and I feel like their relationship together doesn't develop enough so I don't know I was really bored with this I was kind of like skimming and trying to make it through the end but yeah there's that I think I gave it two stars which is like the lowest I've ever given a Kristen Lauren book and and I got this from book of the month there's not many books on a book of the month app that I did dislike you know there's dislike like and love and I don't know, there's only a few disliked it. I put thumbs down for that one, I think. Yeah. Out of all the books that I've rated, which was 101, I've only disliked seven, and that was one of the ones that I have disliked, so... Boo. Anyways, okay, so next up is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I had really high hopes for this one because I loved When in Rome. I read the cheat sheet as well and I thought it was good, 
but when I read When in Rome, that's when I was like, Sarah Adams is my most favorite author ever because When in Rome was so cute. However, when I read Practice Makes Perfect, I just feel like the characters were so similar. The, the female main character is just like light, fluffy, kind of, I don't know, really fluffy. I just felt like it wasn't anything different. And the characters in here, you already get introduced to in the first book, When in Rome. So I feel like it was kind of instant e for me yeah so basically you have this girl who lives in rome kentucky she runs a flower shop and she really wants to get her happily ever after but she doesn't know what is going on she's trying to i don't know she's trying to she's getting help from this bodyguard this is the bodyguard of the senior from the first book so she's getting him she's getting help from him to go on like fake dates getting dating advice and it becomes into like this fake dating thing um but overall i thought it was just okay honestly i can't remember any big details of this book but it looks like I did highlight something so let's see what I highlighted let's see the first thing that I find is you are a good person with a damn good heart you deserve love and to give love how cute just be honest with yourself and what you need or else you're going to be a miserable in or out of love yeah I guess I don't know it was just okay and then next one's a little bit of a tie well, actually, no, I'll go over this one. It's Uncharted by Adriana Anders. And this is my first book by Adriana Anders. I actually haven't heard of this author before, but I did get this book as a blind date of sorts. And it was pretty cool. It's like a romance thriller by Source Books Romantic Suspense. Anyways, so this was my blind date. I thought the premise was interesting, and I wish I got to know more about, like, the thriller aspect. But you have a hotshot pilot, Leo Eddowes, and then you have Elias thorn leo is a woman and so i i always got that mixed up anyway so leo she is a hotshot pilot and she is asked to evacuate this guy named elias and they've been searching for this guy elias for the longest time and they're like okay this is where he is you need to go get him because he has what we need and the mystery aspect the mystery thriller aspect of this book is actually what i like more than the romance itself because this supposed elias thorn is the person who has like one of two virus samples from long ago i don't know if it was like something from antarctica but basically this virus needs to be contained because it can i forgot what it actually does but it is catastrophic if it gets out and into the wrong hands and elias thorne is like the only other person who has it because the second one they've already contained and so they need to get him so i was more interested about that i was like "Ooh, what's this virus tell me more right um but we didn't get as much as I wanted out of that there was a lot of like her getting into Alaska and meeting up with him and they're trying to run away from the actual bad guys who all who also want this virus and so there's a lot of them surviving in Alaska and a lot of them like making out and doing it when danger is afoot like literally there's planes or helicopters right above them trying to find them and they're like you know what let's take this time to make out in front of a tree so I thought that was really I don't know stupid of them <laughs> oh my god damn it get out of there come on you could have been home already with this damn virus but anyways i thought this was a great first blind date that was the first one i ever did so i'm having my husband do this like blind date with a book every month for me but i told him to focus on horror and mystery thriller because i have a lot of romance and fantasy already anyways that's the third one the next one is meet me at the lake i actually like this the most out of all the romances that i've read recently or in may and um it is the book by carly fortune i think it's her second book the first book is every summer after and i really like that book i liked it more than love in other words by christina lauren which is always compared to but uh, meet me at the lake so you have these two people who meet somewhere in canada and they had a fantastic 24 hours together and they tell each other that they're gonna do all these things on their to-do list with their lives their careers and stuff like that and they're gonna meet together a year later at this spot like this cabin that she runs with her family and a year later she's there she's waiting with her popcorn bucket and her bucket hat all these things right but he doesn't show up so sad nine years later so a decade from when they first meet he sh pops up in her life again at her is it a cabin i don't know i think it's like a resort of sorts that she's taking over for her family anyways he pops up again and he's like oh hi <laughs> so they have to work together because he was actually 
um, hired on to help renovate or like help out with the sales of the, the resort before her mother died. And so she is stuck there trying to, you know, redo this resort. And so she has to work with him. And, you know, past comes up, obviously, but, um, yeah, she's trying to figure out if she wants to sell the place and, you know, live somewhere else, pursue her other dreams, or trying to figure out if this is actually what she wants, and so I thought it was lovely. Of course, there's, like, flashbacks back and forth between now and back then, their day together, so I thought it was really cute. Um, yeah, I mean, he does this... He does have his reasons for not meeting up with her, but I'm just like, why couldn't you have just reached out to her sooner, right? Like, he knew where she was, the resort and stuff. I don't know. Whatever. But I, I thought this was cute. It was my favorite of the romances. So, romance books aside, let's get into my top favorites. On all the books from now on, I rated five stars, except for one, but I'm thinking back and I might just bump it up to five stars because I loved it a lot. Okay, so let's go into Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. So, this is a literary fiction book and it's like a lot of games. So you have these two friends who met when they were young. I believe they were 16. The male the male main character, Sam, he had like a car accident and his parents died and so he's like in the hospital and he had like surgery. I think he had surgery for his leg, his ankle. His leg, his ankle, it's, it's like a big thing throughout the whole book. Like he, it's, yeah, he has, well not a big thing but it does affect him a lot throughout his life. But Anyway, so he's there in the hospital and he meets Sadie who is there with her sister who has cancer. Anyways, they meet there, they bond over games, they become friends and this is like the journey of their life for a long time, decades of their lives. It's like coming of age. Um, but they are like kid geniuses. They're like so young and they're making games. They're, they're like attending all these schools and stuff but um, oh my gosh. So my son makes a lot of bookmarks for me because he knows I love reading but look at this bookmark. I honestly don't know what it is. So it looks like a bunch of, oh, a bunch of chickens and, and an egg. And then the back, it looks like someone is in trouble because there's a castle, there's a little smiley and it says, dad. I don't know. I'll have to ask him about this later. So sometimes I forget my son's bookmarks in here. Um, but yeah, I love this book. My friend who is reading it right now for her own book club, she's like, what is it about? I'm like, I don't know if I can honestly tell you one thing that it is about, but it's about many different things. There are friendships. There's some things about cultural appropriation in here that I touched upon a little bit that I really liked, but really it was just like a small little page on it. It's just about so many things. And it's really heartbreaking, honestly. Like she said it was sad, but I was like, mm -mm, you did not get to the part that broke my heart in two yet. And honestly, when that happened, I was like, I don't know if I can go on. This book is so sad, but the ending was sad as well. I don't know. Like the ending is supposed to be good and bittersweet, I think, but I, it just made me sad. Um, but I still gave it a five stars because just, it just made me feel so many feelings and I just love seeing their growth in their life together. Moving on. It's not always peaches and butterflies, you know, but anyways, I loved it. And next, I would say, I'll just go with this duology. The Crowns of Nyaxia. Well, no, it's called the Nightborn Duet. And the Crowns of Nyaxia novels. The Crowns of Nyaxia, it's going to be like this long series with six books. But these two books is like one duet. So their story ends. And I'm happy about that because I'm so bad at picking up series again when I've waited a year or so for the next book. Um, dang, look how big the ashes is compared to the serpent. Um, the second book right here is actually 600 pages and I was like, when is this book gonna end? Why is it so long? Not in a bad way because I did enjoy everything that I read but I was just like, why am I reading so long and it's not ending? <laughs> I don't want that to turn you off. I actually did really enjoy this book. I gave this five stars and I gave the first one four stars, but honestly, thinking back, I will just rate it five because I enjoyed it so much and I love the characters and I miss them very much. But I think I think at the time I just rated four stars because when I finished it, I was like, there's a lot of things in here that's very done before. For example, like the female main character being very stabby, just like from Blood and Ash, and then like the ending twist with some characters also reminded me of other books. I won't say which because I don't want to spoil it, but I thought it wasn't very new or um, original, but whatever. The formula works and I liked it. 
So basically the serpent and the wings of night you have this girl Oriya and she is a human but she got picked up from her you know broken down town and stuff like that it's all like rubble and war zone and stuff like that but she gets picked up by the king the like vampire king um and so she's like growing up as her daughter but she's growing up in this community of all these vampires always staring her down wanting to drink her blood right and so she's always in a defense mode her whole life training and becoming strong and knowing all of the you know knife play whatever <laughs> to kill these people if she needs to defend herself and so yeah there's her and eventually like this tournament or this yeah i'm gonna say tournament that comes around every few centuries is finally here i'm like damn she's lucky that this tournament is coming during her lifetime but anyways so this tournament is here and basically if you win the tournament there can only be one winner if you win this tournament you get to have a wish from Nyaxia herself, which is a goddess. She has her own story that you'll learn in here. Um, anyway, so she wants to go into this tournament and win it so that she can be bonded with her father and basically share her powers and never become helpless again. And she really wants to like find her family, her human family, and save them from vampires. I don't know. So yeah, she goes into this tournament and there's a lot of other people in this tournament as well and you get introduced to the male main character whose name is Rain. I always forget. I don't know why I forget because he's like my favorite. But anyways, Rain. He has his own reasons for wanting to win this tournament as well and it's so beautiful just learning about him and his story and his friendships with other characters and stuff like that. I thought it was great. Um, what else? Yeah, there's like different, different um, species of vampires. You have like her king is a different one, they're Rishon, and then his, oh no, his, this main, this male main character is Rishon, I think hers is Hyaj, I don't know, there's like a lot of different words that I'm probably not pronouncing right, but there's different breeds of vampires, and so this main, male main character is a different breed from the one that she grew up with, and so you get to learn about like different politics, different areas of land and stuff like that. There is a map, you know what, let me see, I'm sure there's a map. Yes, there is a map. So I love it when these books have maps because I can just reference it and I'll be like, you know, what are you talking about? Where is this place? So yeah, I loved it. And then the second one, you know, picks up after the end of the first book, like right after. And I don't want to spoil too much because, you know, it... I don't know what I can say about this book that will not spoil the first one, but just know there was a lot of betrayals in that one and you pick up here and you have to work on that and it's a different feel because the first one is more about like this tournament, but this one is about like this war that that is ongoing after the tournament. So it's like, it's, it's that. Tournament war-ish. Okay, so there's that. And then my second most favorite book of May is Jade City. Um, who knows if I can upload this video in time, but basically we are having a live show talking about like non-spoilery parts and then we're going deep into all the details, so all the spoilers, but I love this one so much. I am kicking myself in the butt for just finally now getting to it because I've had this on my shelf for the longest time. The longest time, probably when this came out. 2018, I'm going to say. Let's see. 2018. Yeah, I've had this book for five years. Five years. And I finally read it. So thank you so much to Daphne for starting this, you know, readathon for the next couple months. I love this one so much. It's in my top favorite fantasy uh, books of all time. It is an urban fantasy and it takes place in this island of Kakan. And um, yeah, Jan Loon is like the capital bustling city. And this whole island is the island of Kakan. And you have people on this, basically if you are Kekanese, then you have the ability to draw power from Jade. And there's a bunch of aspects to this book. Like you have the Jade miners, you have the Jade like carvers who whistle down the Jade into, you know, I don't know, small pieces that you can put on, that you can wear in your body. Anyway, so there's so many aspects to actually getting Jade and wearing it and manifesting these powers but you have I think there's like six different powers that you can have there's like perception um stealing yourself um I don't know quickness that's probably not one of them or the word for it but there's like different abilities that you can hone or get from these jades it's basically after this great war now that the war is over and a new generation vies for control of Kekon's bustling capital city 
the four siblings of the powerful Call family must prepare for battle. Yeah, it's basically, they, they talk a lot about this war that was, you know, a long time ago. They had to fight for green bones themselves, but now that the green bones are thriving and living, the green bones there's different clans of green bones that are fighting each other now for territory over the kick on. So it's about that. There's like many different clans, a little, many different clans, a lot of small clans, but two big main clans, the call clan. And then like, Oh, what is their name? There's like two big clans that are fighting for territory over kick on. And that's about this. And I think the next books kind of like open up broader into not just KCON, but not going into that too much. Anyway, so yeah, this was just so intense, very intense, very high stakes. Like, I don't want anyone to die, but people die in this book. Um, and there is some romance in there. It's not a fantasy romance at all, but whatever is in here, makes my heart full. I'm always rooting for them. Family is duty, magic is power, honor is everything. And basically every one of the call siblings I love for their own reasons. There's Lan, there's Hilo, which I pronounced Hilo for the longest time. And then I heard the audiobook and it was Hilo and I was like, duh. But anyways, there's Hilo, there's Shay, and then there's Andon, who is like a cousin of sorts, I think. Not exactly a sibling by blood, but a sibling by, I don't know, adoption. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I love all of them and I love Andon's story. He's he's like the youngest of all of them and he is training in the um, academy where everyone trains at a young age until a certain age because you, there's like three, four years of not even using Jade but you have to get build up some sort of immunity to the Jade. Yeah, there's a lot of aspects to Jade but yeah. So the, yeah, Andon is still in school and he's like in his last year and he's like the best of the class so I love his story as well but yeah going to talk about this a lot more in the live show who knows when i will upload this video probably after the live show so anyways it'll be on daphne's channel and of course my number one read of may fourth wing i am starting to read this already in june for our reread we are all reading together in meredith um reading with Merbs discord and i've already started it but i'm not that far in i'm probably still on chapter one Let's see, am I on chapter two yet? Nope, still on chapter one. Mm -hmm. I just have so many books to read that when I read or reread a book, I just feel so bad for the books that I need to read. But anyways, Fourth Wing is a magical, romantic, exciting, adventurous, very intense book at some parts. But you have the main character, Violet, and she goes by violence by some people in the book. But Violet, she is kind of like the runt of the family, I think. It kind of feels like that. She has, well, she had two siblings, okay? One of them passed away, and the other one is a dragon rider older than her. And Violet herself didn't really want to be a dragon rider. She wanted to be a scribe. Oh, yeah, there's a war going on, okay? <laughs> anyway, so she wanted to be a scribe and help that way in this war, writing down all the history and stuff so people can learn from their mistakes and refer back. I don't know. That's what she wants to do. And the Basquiat College, a war college, has different areas of studies. You can study or train to become a dragon rider, you can be a scribe, you can be a healer, and I always forget what the fourth one is. But anyways, there's like four, right? And so she always wanted to become a scribe, but her mom, who's like the lieutenant or whatever, she's like, no, you are going to be a dragon rider. No daughter of mine is going to be a scribe. But her father was a scribe anyway, so she's like, all right, mom, I'll listen to you. So she... She has chronic illness, this like chronic pain type of joint issue, right? That she's, she always, she's like prone to injuries. And so she's like, I'm definitely going to die, but I'm going to try my hardest not to. So she's training and training and training. And basically like any step of this Basgath War College, you can die. Um, the beginning, like the first day of this college, all the other people, the healers, the, the scribes, they're like walking into their designated area in the college, right? But for the dragon riders, they have to climb this big parapet and you can basically like fall off. You can get hit by lightning. I don't know. You can die so many ways and people definitely do, but somehow Violet makes it through and she starts her training as a dragon rider. And so in comes Zayden. Zayden is like the son of like this rebel, right? That was like his father was basically killed because of Violet's mom. And so automatically they're like enemies, you know? 
And so there's that. <laughs> This book is definitely marketed as an enemies to lovers book. So I already knew right away that I was like, ooh, Zayden, okay, sure, enemy. But I loved it so much. I love their journey because it wasn't really like forced or it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was too quick. It was definitely realistic, their enemies to lovers journey. Oh, I loved it so much. And there's definitely a lot of things in this book that may surprise you. I'd say may because it definitely surprised me, but I talked to a couple people that they were like, I saw this coming a mile away. Anyways, like it kept me hooked all the way to the last page and the last page was like very on the edge of your sea, oh my gosh, moment, right? Anyways, I love this book so much. I got kind of crazy and bought a lot of editions. I have the bookish box edition coming in. Who knows when, right? Maybe next year, hopefully this year, <laughs> but it is the June book box. Anyways, I got the Probably Smut edition, which I am really excited about because I feel like that's the only one that did a cover makeover, you know? And what else? I got the German edition. Hmm. I thought I had a lot more, but I guess not. Oh, I'm trying to get the Fairy Loot edition, but that sale is coming out later this month and it's going to be a bloodbath. I guess I only have five editions, huh? I thought I had a lot more. Let me look. I wrote it all down because I knew I was going to forget. Let me see what editions I have. Hmm. Let's see. Book subs? Nope, that's not it. Oh, I know. I wrote it on a little post-it note and I put it on my fridge. Duh. Anyways, so thank you so much for watching my May wrap-up. I think I did an okay job of remembering what everything was about. I think. Let me just stack it all up in here. Ugh. But yeah, it's pretty much a winner for fantasy and a loser month for romance. If you have any romance regs, like really good romance, contemporary romance regs, just let me know because I feel like this month gave me such a romance slump and I need a really good one to get me out of it. But anyways, this is my May wrap up. Dun 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 dun. I read nine books and most of the ones that I enjoyed were fantasy and romance was a pooper. But thank you so much again for joining me. Just drop down any romance regs below, please. And I will see you next time. Bye.